Oh, hey. So, as it turns out, frame rate in the reserve base has been an issue that a lot of us have been having to struggle with, myself included. In fact, uh, I ended up having to do a pretty unconventional thing, and that was removing uh, this here 2080 Ti that I had sitting in SLI in this nearly $5,000 computer, um, if only to gain 15 FPS. It was kind of a last-ditch effort. I didn't actually think it was going to work, but lo and behold, there you go. So uh, I tried to make this guide for all of you as encompassing as I can now that point 12 is here. Hopefully, uh, you guys dig it. If you do, please, again, all I ask is that you share it with a buddy. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you'll probably hear me mention something about having to pull the 2080 Ti out in the, uh, in the video because I'm making this after I'm done with all the, the post-editing and stuff. But uh, like I said, I hope you dig it, and uh, thank you for your time. So here we are in offline mode, and I want to make an important distinction between the frame rates that you will see in offline mode versus that of being actually online and playing a multiplayer map. And that is that the frame rates in offline mode are significantly better than what you will see online. And the primary reason for that, for the only thing that I could consider being any different whatsoever, and I guess the logical choice, is that there just aren't players around. Without having to animate anyone else, it seems as though this runs really, really well. The fact of the matter is, is that there are other players that come into and out of proximity detection for the game, and obviously there's some loading of loadouts and having to animate players nearby and scavs and the like. And because of that, the frame rate for maps like this seem to be significantly reduced. Now in this case, the lowest frame rates seem to come when you are trying to aim out of a window into the wilderness or aiming outside, um, going inside a building. But for this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to find like a pretty laggy spot in terms of frames, whatever we can find that renders in the lower frame rate end and adjust it accordingly. Now, I just want to be completely clear that right now, I am running in roughly the same configuration that I had been running the game back before point 12 started. In this case, I'm using uh, the following settings of texture quality high, shadows quality high, visibility 2000, shadow visibility of 120, TAA, HBAO high, SSR high, filtering on, and sharpness 1.1 with only Zeebler checked. And that is a pretty important distinction because when we are looking around like this, you can see that it looks relatively smooth here on the base. But it didn't always. And one of the things that I want to outline is that up until this point when I had been playing the game, inside of my physical computer rested two Aorus 2080 Ti's in an SLI configuration. And the reason why that was is because, quite frankly, that's how the PC was built. Um, there were some very, very generous people that offered to have a PC built for me, and in sending it to me, had put a pair of 2080 Ti's in it uh, in SLI. In a lot of cases, this is a very, very powerful setup, right? There's no denying that a computer with two GPUs, in most cases, is better than one. But in this case, it actually seems to be detrimental. When I was running around on offline mode on this map, the way that I am right now, the frame rate was actually about 15 FPS less. I was in this exact configuration getting somewhere around 50 to 53 FPS whenever I would ADS and look around. But the reason for this guide is not only to talk about how SLI seems to be a bad thing, but it also seems to prove that there are some other tweaks and adjustments that you can make. Obviously, your mileage may vary. In my case, I use a Ryzen 3900X that I am clocking at a speed of about 4600 uh, on two cores. So if you're using uh, a faster i7 or i9 chip, by all means, adjust your frequency response to whatever it is that you think that your chip can handle. First, what are the things that we adjust if we want to increase our frames above 70 in this case? Well, the first thing that we do is we look at the shadows. In this case, Tarkov seems to have some frame rate issues as it pertains to shadows. So in my case, I take shadows and put it on low, but I do leave shadow visibility at about 75. In adjusting that, you can see that our frame rates are now instead of 70, they're now 73 to 75. In addition to that, what we do is we take overall visibility, and if you're having some frame rate issues again, one of the things that you want to look at doing is turning that down. 
If you run with a visibility of about a thousand, it should net you a frame or two. It won't be anything crazily drastic. One thing of note, if you're really having some frame rate problems, and this is probably a last ditch effort because it will cost you some visibility, is adjusting this from a thousand to 400. This does, at least in my case, give a pretty marked uh, increase in frames. In this case, you're looking at 80. So maybe it's five, five FPS with a 400 visibility instead of 1000. But I think you also start sacrificing some visibility of other players. Uh, however, there is a filter if you're using NVIDIA cards that I can show you that, that tends to work pretty well with knocking away some of the fog. One of the other things that you want to look at is the idea of SSR and HBAO. Uh, SSR seems to have a larger hit than HBAO does. Uh, I tend to leave both of these off but you'll see that uh, what was 75 FPS is now somewhere around maybe 74 to 76. So it gives a little bit of a, of a bonus. Um, however, uh, if you put this on colored very high, it tends to be a bit of a hit, maybe two frames. This is more of what I refer to as quality of life kind of stuff than anything else. Uh, what seems to have a pretty large or, or substantial FPS hit is obviously this LOD quality. By turning this all the way up, you'll see about a 20%, uh, or, or I'm sorry, a 20 FPS decrease, somewhere around 58. Um, and obviously taking that and turning the slider all the way off brings us back up to somewhere around 75. Lastly are these three check boxes at the bottom. Z blur, chromatic aberrations, and grass shadows. Now before, chromatic aberrations never really used to do anything other than cause some, some weird wonky lighting. Uh, nowadays, it seems like uh, Chromatic Aberrations has been fixed and doesn't really give that much of an FPS hit. So leaving it on isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it will make the game look a little bit prettier, um, but should not have much of a performance hit. In the case of Grass Shadows, though, in saving this, you can see that there is uh, a few FPS worth of a hit in regard to Grass Shadows, especially if you have the visibility turned up a little bit more. So... Um, when it comes to stuff like this, if you turn the visibility up, etc., or if you're somebody that likes uh, a lot of visibility um, in, in what it is that you're able to see, you will notice that Grass Shadows ends up costing you a handful of frames. By turning that off, it will give you a bit of an increase. Now, the largest benefit that I have honestly seen to this so far is using the game in dedicated full screen. And... I'm not sure why it is so drastic for me in this case by using dedicated full screen versus windowed borderless. But when I change this to full screen mode, it is significantly higher, at least for me, in frame rate. So in this case, uh, I tend to gain uh, three to five frames just by having that going on. And in addition, it also plays a lot more stably. But again, just to reiterate, this being an offline mode does not necessarily give a very, very good indication of what it is that you can expect in online. And what I'm going to do right now is uh, pull up online mode. I'm just going to do a scav run and show you the difference between uh, visibility with the filters that I have been using off and, and on. Okay? Okay, so here we are in a scav run. Nothing crazy. We got a 133 with a laser on it. Nothing amazing. But the point of this is to start looking at the objective frame rate. So you can see where this has dropped down to 59 when you ADS, 62, 63. And the goal here, for me at least, was to keep the frame rate above 60 while still being able to use the native resolution of the monitor that I have. In this case, I'm using a 1440p Samsung CLG 70, which is a pretty nice monitor. But obviously, rendering stuff in 2K is a little bit different than rendering in it in, in uh, 1080p. If you'll notice, the largest frame dip comes from ADSing in and ADSing out, and that's really because of the, the blooming that goes on with the leaves and such at distance. But onto the filters. So in this case, uh, OBS and its recording is a little bit brighter. There's a little bit ga of gamma placed on OBS so that when I'm streaming, the audience can see a little bit clearer than uh, what they would normally be able to see. But in this case, you want to hit Alt F3 and open up the game filter uh, overlay that is built right into NVIDIA. And in this case, I just have a filter that's called Details. Now, obviously, it makes the game look a little bit weird and grainy 
uh, in this case when it comes to OBS because I'm still dialing in the gamma correction that I've done. But on this, all I'm doing is, is reducing some of the fog that you'll see at distance. So by adding some sharpening uh, for distance sharpening, some HDR toning, uh, and um, a little bit on the, uh, the, the clarity slider. So that's really it. You can turn it off, and this is essentially how I've been playing. Now, it does make the distance stuff look a little bit more cartoony and a little bit over bright. I'm still dialing it in. But the idea is, again, to just kind of increase visibility as much as I possibly can. But you can also see, because of the elimination of some of the fog, it doesn't have as much negative bias uh, onto the video card as uh, it would with all of that fog kind of being uh, around and present. By filtering it away a little bit, it seems to have uh, increased the frames a skosh. So in this case, it seems like uh, we already knew that Tarkov does not optimize its game for SLI performance. It only uses one GPU, even if you have two. It was something that I didn't realize and ultimately decided to just try and test. And this is obviously pr proof that at least in Tarkov's case, only a single GPU will outperform uh, any two GPU setup. Um, because I guess in this case, because a single GPU is running at 16x instead of two GPUs running at eight, that the single 16x GPU is just doing more because there's more threads. So that's that's it, fellas. That's what I've got. Hopefully, you guys will uh, will find this to be relatively useful. I hope you do. If you do, please tell a buddy. Um, and once again, I will show the uh, the graphics settings. And this is uh, about what I am using right now. This is what I'm using in the game. Uh, Low shadows quality, LOD at minimum, overall visibility at 1500, shadows at 75, TAA anti-aliasing, not, not TAA high, uh, 1X resample, obviously keeping it native, uh, anisotropic filtering on or per texture, it's, it's your choice, it really hasn't uh, done much for me, uh, and then I leave Z blur and chromatic aberrations on because I just like how it looks and feels. Obviously, then uh, playing in dedicated full screen, at least in my case, seems to do a better job. So hopefully you guys uh, find this useful. Um, your mileage may vary, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.